I'm Rhonda Rowland, and I have a rare genetic condition called Wilson disease, where copper, an essential dietary mineral, builds up in the liver and brain, causing fatal copper poisoning. It put me in liver failure as a college student. I was fortunate. I was diagnosed, there was a treatment, and it worked. I was hopeful I could live a normal life, and I went on to become a CNN medical correspondent. Looking back, the first sign I had that something was wrong was severe abdominal pain that came on suddenly. It was so severe I couldn't go to class, but our family internist dismissed it. Then one morning, I noticed that my skin and the whites of my eyes were yellow. I went to the emergency room and after a week of testing, was diagnosed with chronic active hepatitis. Thankfully, my doctor didn't give up and he called me back to do an eye exam. I had Kaiser Fleischer rings, that is, copperhead deposited in my corneas, a telltale sign of Wilson disease. Since my diagnosis, I've discovered that all of us with Wilson disease are different. I have what's known as the hepatic or liver form of the disease. My symptoms came on slowly, so I didn't realize I was sick. I've talked to dozens of others with my disease and have come to see that I'm one of the lucky ones. Among the courageous Wilson warriors I've met is Amanda, a young woman with the neurological form of the disease who has never given up. My life before Wilson's was very predictable. You know, get up, nine to five job. Well, I was making fashionable health wear. I loved my job. I was very independent. That was definitely my mantra. Wilson's disease affects many parts of my daily life because you literally have no idea what you're gonna wake up to the next morning. It could be super painful, crazy, tremors everywhere, barely able to move, or um, sometimes I wake up stuttering and, and can't speak properly. When you Think of all those different variables that it could be. Uh, it affects how you interact with the world. What I'm experiencing right, right now is a, a stabbing pain just in my shoulder that just shoots all the way down my arm to my fingertips. And it's a, typically a kind of pain that no over-the-counter drugs can really touch. Right now, my good day looks like very minimal pain little to no tremors, if any. And I'm able to like go grocery shopping with my mom, maybe do a little cleaning, or getting some real quality time sewing. Maybe do a little extra play time with my dog Ellis outside. Ellis has been a little ray of sunshine. It was last fall where I noticed that I was really starting to struggle with the beginnings of some serious depression. And it's just been really powerful for me. Um, and he has taught me a lot about giving yourself space to need other people, to need other beings, that it's okay to want to be loved, to have companionship. The first signs of like that things were just really going bad for me where I had this bobblehead thing going on. My head was just going and going and going and I, it was very terrifying. And then my arms were moving out of control and none of it was consistent. And that was really, really strange. I would have to crawl and sometimes army crawl to get to, the, to and from the bathroom, to and from the kitchen. My healthcare provider, my initial one that I went to, she was like, oh, well, you're 30, right? And then you said your marriage is on the rocks and you've been stressed. This is just all that. I remembered a doctor that I'd seen like two months prior. I came in to him and he was like, Amanda, this is, this is not you. This isn't how these things manifest. I mean, a, a little tremor in your hands or something from stress or anxiety, but not this. <laughs> um, sorry, obviously I get, a little extra stress just even thinking about it. I felt alone and abandoned by my practitioners until I found my, my latest one. When I found out that it was Wilson's disease, it was relieving and it was a, a real challenge 
if there's finally a label. And when you have a label, when you know what it is, you can try and fight the thing. I manage my condition in a lot of different ways. So first, I did my chelating like you're supposed to. I, the medication, I take zinc every day. I also have a little band that heats up and it helps release um, some of the tension in my um, nerves and in my muscles. And then I have compression wear. And then I also have a weighted vest that I wear and that helps tell my body where it's supposed to be and reminds it to relax. When I discovered the weighted vest, this was the first thing that I had. This is not cute. This is not cute to wear. But this weighted vest thing that I came up with is much more aesthetically pleasing and it is much more comfortable for every day. I made a pact with myself. I was like, okay, I can have a disability and I can still look fly. I can still put on makeup. I can still have earrings and accessories and things. I think you should let whatever you were good at before shine during this time too. See how it could make your new life maybe that much better. My diet I found to be very, very key with managing my disease. And that's where my wellness chart came into play. To have some way of really gauging what's happening from day to day as well as what I'm eating. Every step that I make has to be thought about. It does get overwhelming at times. I really look forward to these new avenues for Wilson's disease being developed. The early diagnosis. I am also excited about the genetic therapy options that are potentially coming into play. I see a future for myself um, outside of Wilson's. I wouldn't turn it down to live without the symptoms of Wilson's if it were an option. But I also wouldn't trade my experience with Wilson's for anything. Thank you, Amanda, for sharing your inspiring story as you hope for many more good days as research continues for Wilson disease.